Hello guys and welcome to Monteverde. I am joined by my best friend, Zara. And she is joining me on my journey throughout Costa Rica because she has Easter holidays. First things first, here's how we got from Puerto Viejo to Monteverde a bit sooner than expected. We left Puerto Viejo on Good Friday before Easter, which meant that there was no bus at 9.30, but only a bus at 12.30 to go to San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica. We booked our ticket across from the bus stop and decided not to wait there for three hours, but to leave our bags at the hostel and go for a good lunch. A typical Gallo Pinto before getting on the bus for the next four hours. We arrived in San Jose and wanted to take the bus to Manuel Antonio National Park. But when we got to the next bus station, we saw the last bus of the day drive off due to different schedules on the holidays. We were forced to spend the night in San Jose, which looked like a ghost town and only the Chinese shops were open. We went for a slice of pizza and befriended the owner, Luis. After missing one of only two nights we had booked in Manuel Antonio and without getting tickets for the national park, we decided to get the earliest bus to Monteverde the next day. We booked an extra night here in the town called Santa Elena at Pension Santa Elena, which we loved. The kitchen wasn't great, but there was free tea and coffee and we had a private room. We walked around town and decided to treat ourselves to this delicious lunch. Afterwards, we passed by the frog pond, which we decided wasn't worth $20 per person. Tonight, we are going on a night walk here in Monteverde and I'm really terrified of what we're gonna see but also very excited because everyone has been recommending this activity and it's the first one we are going to do here the first introduction to the monte verde cloud forest the cloud forest takes up only one percent of the forests on the planet so it is very special and i do look forward to seeing it up close we were picked up by the van and taken to the Kingaju office, from where we started our walk. The first thing we saw was this butterfly with see-through wings. Next up was something I really wanted to see, the red-eyed leaf frog, one of the most popular Costa Rican inhabitants. They are so tiny and cute. The highlight of my night personally was this armadillo that was looking for food about a meter away from us. I was really hoping we would see one. Next up, really high up in the trees, we saw a slot who was on the move. They hang out this high up so the predators can't get to them. Trigger warning, this is a huge tarantula spider, probably Zara's least favorite sighting of the evening. We then saw a walking leaf, soon followed by the coolest sighting of the night, a scorpion. Did you know that scorpions glow in the dark under UV light? This looked so incredibly cool. We spotted a toucan sleeping, checked up on our friend the sloth and saw another bird fast asleep. We saw this cool guy with a horn and saw another teeny tiny frog. Honestly, the guides are so skilled at spotting animals. There are three tours each night and we did the latest one at 8 p.m. We assume that this is when the animals are most active and also the guides already know where they are hanging out by now. After some information about this plant, we made our way back. And we're back. We survived. <laughs> we were so anxious and scared starting this night walking tour with King Kaju. It costs us $30 and I think this will probably be the best $30 we've spent because we've seen so many animals. We also got a little light and the guy did speak very good English. He, We could understand him very well. And we did see, well I didn't see them, but the group saw two snakes. I was guarded by a human shield, crying in silence. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but I'm so proud of myself for, um, yeah, just even being close and taking the risk of putting myself in that situation, not knowing how I would react because I don't have much control over how I physically react. But yeah. Luckily it all went well. We saw so much, especially the armadillo I'm so happy about. And today is actually Easter, so it was a holiday armadillo. And if you know where that's from, we can be friends. So yeah, I highly recommend you go on a night walking tour in Monteverde. Tomorrow we are going to do the El Tigre tour. We were going to visit the Santa Elena Cloud Forest, but instead when we were talking to the receptionists, they all said we had to do this instead. So that's what we are going to do. We will see a waterfall, go horseback riding, and also do a hike, crossing, hanging bridges, etc. 
and we had not heard of this before today so we are guessing it's a true hidden gem and we're very excited to see what it's like so for now we are off to bed because the adrenaline has worn off but I'll see you in the morning. Last night we went on a night walking tour, which was honestly incredible. And today we are doing the El Tigre package, which includes a waterfall and so much more. Before leaving, we enjoyed our included typical local breakfast at our pension. Then we were picked up for a very bumpy ride in the back of this truck. We arrived at the starting point a bit nauseous, but probably the best views in Costa Rica made up for it. We have made it to the El Tigre home office or the headquarters and from here we will be starting the hike. We are just hydrating for a bit with the free juice and coffee that's included before setting off and seeing all the waterfalls and hanging bridges. We then set off on our 8 kilometer hike including 6 waterfalls and many hanging bridges. We have started our descend. We are descending down into the valley. We were at the top of the ridge that apparently separates um, both sides of the continent, the Pacific side and the Caribbean side. So now I think we are going down into the Caribbean side, which is greener. Um, it is a very special landscape here. You basically have rainforest along the coast, then cloud forest um, here all the way up to the top of the ridge, and then another just drier forest on the other side towards the Pacific which is very special it's uh, all in a very small distance within each other and yeah cloud forest only takes up 1% of all forests in the world so it's super special and I do hope we'll have a good experience with it and we definitely did it wasn't long before we passed the first waterfall along the path we made it to the first viewpoint, which is a viewpoint over the third waterfall, which means we should be about a third of the way. Uh, this is a really nice viewpoint and a really great waterfall. After going for a dip in this magnificent waterfall, we could see the first hanging bridge ahead. So we resumed our hike. One of my favorite parts of the hike was this barefoot trail. If you know me, you know I love to walk barefoot. However, if you told me before that I'd be doing it in the Costa Rican forest, I wouldn't have believed you. It got pretty muddy and fun and at the end of the path there was a bench and a natural stream where we could wash our feet. Hanging bridges and waterfalls are so cool. The hanging bridges are pretty much passing by the waterfalls. Wow, this is really freaking epic. You could see on the map earlier that there is a loop to another waterfall. You can either skip it or take an extra climb to this waterfall and I would highly recommend doing it because look at this. After another waterfall shower, we went back down and rejoined the path. It wasn't long before we reached checkpoint number three. We have made it to checkpoint number three, which means we need to signal the horses that we are on our way uh, to get there so that the horses are waiting for us in time. Let's hope we make it back in time and we can have lunch and still get the shuttle of 2.30.
made it to the last stop along the way, which is a stop where we get on the horses. We need to wait for one more person and we hope she gets here soon so that we still have time to have lunch before the shuttle comes. There's also a white-nosed Guati here, which is looking for food and it definitely got some. And also the bikes, the zipline bike arrives here. So it goes from point three to point four. Oh, the Guati is back for more. Both of us and the horses got geared up to start the last stretch back to the starting point. This is a steep uphill which you can also choose to walk or take the 4x4 jeep back up. The terrain is pretty rocky and I've never really ridden horses but I always assumed that it was something ethically acceptable. However, I felt so bad for the horses having to do the uphill with us on its back and these rocks under the paws. I don't know. The landscape, however, is absolutely breathtaking. It was so sunny, which meant that the green of the landscape was really popping off. The included lunch we ordered at the start was given to us to take away, and it was enough to even have dinner off. We braced ourselves for the drive back and made it to Santa Elena. There we checked into our originally booked accommodation called Monte Fresco. It is unfortunately quite a bit outside of the city center, but had a great kitchen and private rooms. They also include an amazing breakfast. Good morning, another day, another activity. Today we are ziplining, which is one of the most popular activities that people do here in Monteverde. So it'll include a few, quite a few different ziplines, a Superman zipline and the Tarzan swing. Sarah, how excited are you about the Tarzan swing? I am absolutely terrified. <laughs> I've been very brave about it and telling Zara she has to do it and really supporting her on, but I'm not quite sure yet if I'm gonna do it. I mean, I guess I am, but it'll all depend on the moment that I'm standing there waiting for the free fall. Uh, so yeah, off we go. It does say that you probably can't use any of your own cameras. I don't know if that means that they have their cameras but I'm hoping I can still document this for you guys. Just a quick FYI to all our friends and family, if this <laughs> is our last day, we love you and I hope you will miss us. <laughs> I don't think it'll be that bad, but um, yeah, just in case, we love you guys. We thought we would be picked up at our accommodation like the others, but instead we had to go to a pickup point nearby. We eventually were picked up by the bus and taken to the Extremo head office. I convinced them I wasn't going to pay for their pictures if I would promote their products and in general everyone who had an action cam seemed to have it with them. All I took was my bum bag with my phone and then we got the necessary equipment and explanations before starting off. There were so many people that it probably took us an hour from arrival to the first zip line. After the first few zip lines, there was a surprise waiting for us, a duo zip line. Sarah had to wrap her legs around me and off we went. Between the zip lines we had to do quite a bit of climbing to get to the next one sometimes but it was all worth it to be passing through the treetops like this if you are feeling not so great about yourself this is a great activity to do because at every point that we reached they asked us for our names where we were from and started hitting on us so it is very good for your self-esteem the only downside to the longer zip lines with the best views is that the view was always the same because you were crossing the same valley. We got to do another duo zip line which we loved, but for some reason Zara, who is a lefty, didn't manage to break all that well. So we pretty much crashed into the arrival space. Yeah. Jump! 
in the hand. Yes, yes. After a few more, it was finally time for the Superman zip line. They put our harness on front to back and we were attached to the line like this. This is my favorite kind of zip line. You really feel like you are flying. Last but not least, we got to do a zipline through this tunnel. They asked us to hold our arms open for the picture when we came out. So here we go. <laughs> then it was finally time for what everyone had been fearing the past hours. The infamous Tarzan swing. What happens is first you sit down, then they lower you a bit before letting go of you. And that's when you make a free fall and swing across the valley. This was Zara's biggest fear and to be honest, I didn't think she would do it. It also didn't help that we had to wait up there for about half an hour watching and hearing the others make the jump. Ah, sí? Perfecto. Okay, Sara, ¿lista? No. <laughs> Zara eventually jumped first and I followed. It was one of the scariest things I've ever done and I didn't think I would be a screamer. But the free fall seemed to last for ages. I thought the first instant would be the worst, but no, like the feeling gets worse after the first second because you keep falling and your body is kind of fighting against it. <laughs> I was so nervous that I was so nervous that I was so nervous. Guys, we made it! We survived! And Sarah even did the Tarzan swing, which I didn't think she'd do. Um, there was a slight moment of 10 seconds where I actually thought I was go wasn't going to do it. Yeah, and I had to stay very brave and like not show how afraid I was so she wouldn't get like so she'd go through with it. Yeah. I mean, the first three seconds are the worst, the free falling. I didn't think I'd scream that much. Like I thought the first second would be like the worst, like the first moment. But the fact that you keep falling, that was like the worst part for me. Yeah, but we did it. I'm we did so it. Happy we did. Now we're gonna treat ourselves to something delicious and definitely some water because we are extremely dehydrated. There was like one water station, but we were all the way at the back. So no more water for us. It is now 3 p.m. We were picked up at like 10.30 and we started the whole parkour at 12.30, more or, me more or less. I was gonna say muzzle menos. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it did take quite a while, a lot longer than I thought, but I guess we also waited quite a bit in line for the zip lines, especially the last one. It was so cold up there. There was a lot of wind. Oh, I wore my long sleeves just to cover up for the sun as well. Oh. Ah, yeah, this that's one a Oh, what a cutie! Sara just bought it an aguti, which is pretty cool because we hadn't seen one of those yet. Well, Sara hadn't seen one of those yet. So, yeah, we have now arrived at the reception. And you can buy photos and videos, but I managed to make my own. There is a shuttle back into town every hour and of course we just missed it. When we got back, we treated ourselves to some fries and burgers and the next day we took the Jeep Bo Jeep to La Fortuna to continue the adventure. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't want to miss any of the next Central America videos. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!